One of my favorite tools for using online meetings is zoom.us because they have a really cool thing called virtual backgrounds. Now this allows you to look like you're in a different setting than you may actually be, but the best part is, is you don't actually need a green screen behind you in order to get this effect. The reason this is so important is that we all think that being on video is a little bit embarrassing at first. And so we might distract them with a beautiful background or show them that we're in an office with a bookcase, but that can be really distracting as well. And it can get away from the message that you're looking like. Now, I also take some meetings every now and then in a casual setting. Maybe it's in my kitchen, only for internal meetings, of course, not facing the customer. But in this case, the virtual background can be amazing. So some things to look out for when you're setting up your space is what the background looks like. It's different than if you're going on site. In an on site meeting, the room is the room. You don't have much control over it. But when you're doing it remote, your client or the person that you're meeting with will be looking around the screen. We're all visual beings. So make sure that what they see is appropriate. Now, how you actually look in the office, that's a whole different thing. Every now and then to get the right camera angle, like we talked in another video, or the right lighting, I may do some different things with my setups. For example, if I go to a conference room that I'm unfamiliar with to do a remote training session, it's not uncommon for me to put a chair on top of the table and then the camera on top of my computer so I can look directly in. And so if someone looking in from the outside sees that setup, they're like, whoa, that looks crazy. But to the person viewing it, it has the right angle, the right lighting, and this will make you appear more professional, even though your studio may look a little bit unprofessional. So keep some things in mind. One of the things that I noticed is the fan. If you have a fan that's going on in the background, this something is, depending on your internet speed, this could take up some extra bandwidth and it's a little distracting. So just move the camera angle either up or down or to the side to get rid of any things in the background that may be distracting. It is best practice to try and have a blank wall as best as you can because then that looks like you did this more on purpose. But either way, the virtual background, this is the way to go. And we'll provide you a link in this course.